Why don't I call the meeting to order? Um, the first item on the agenda is to review and approve the minutes from April 8th, 2020. Motion Those to approve. Uh, so I'll second that. All in favor? Uh, no. I need to roll call because we are doing this remotely. John? Yes. Fred? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, item two are the vendor and payroll warrants. Those are also in our packet. Uh, I think I signed those yesterday. Um, um, these were the ones two weeks ago. Two weeks ago ones. Yeah. Okay. I signed them two weeks ago. I signed another set yesterday. I guess that'll be at our next meeting. Yep. Um, uh, are there any comments on the vendor and payroll warrants? No, it looks good. Okay. Great. Uh, number three is public comment. So here we would listen to uh, comments from the public related to items that are not listed on the agenda. Uh, is there anybody here who has uh, comments on things not listed on the agenda? Okay, hearing none, then let's move on to the next, which is a scheduled appointment. Uh, the folks from Quanquant Farms are here to discuss a request to extend the end date of their seasonal alcohol license from October 31st to November 30th, 2020. So here, um, I don't know whether to turn this back to Brian or to turn this over to Ann or who. But it's either uh, Janelle or Ann. Um, I'm not sure which one of them wants to speak on this. Okay. Yeah, I can I can say a few words about this. So um, as, as you can imagine, we are uh, feeling the impact from the coronavirus pandemic and we're finding a need to have to reschedule a lot of our spring and pot potentially summertime events. Um, and we're just trying to make sure that we're able to remain flexible for our clients. So we are also going in front of the zoning board um, in early May to ask for um, a our special permit to be adjusted for this year as well. Um, so we're hoping to just retain as many people for the 2020 season as possible and, you know, keep the ability to be flexible for people as we learn more about what's happening with this pandemic. So part of that is <coughs> the liquor license. So we are asking um, in part of uh, that our liquor license gets extended um, if our special permit gets approved in May. So essentially, okay. we've, uh, like Janelle says, we've had to push um, May. We're not essentially operating in May or June. We don't mm -hmm. uh, for any events. So we're not using our license. I mean, we obviously okay. have one for May and June, but we will ha probably have no events for May or June. And certainly July is a big question mark. So um, this is one mm -hmm. thing we could do just in case. Uh, we can have mm -hmm. events this season, and we were able to push some people into November. Uh, we wanted to be able to offer the liquor license. Yeah. Um, John, Fred, do you have anything? anything I, I think there? it's automatic. I have no problems with it at all. No, I, I don't either. I, I guess it comes down to the, what, is it the ZBA approving the extension? Yes, we're, we meet with them next week. Okay. Right, so I don't think we take any. We need to take any action here, but um, I think because we are the authority on the liquor licenses, yeah. um, if uh, we don't take an action, that means they have to come back again afterwards. <clears throat> Is that right, Brian? Yes. Yes. Um, but they would have time to if they meet with the ZBA next week. It could be like a two-minute item because I, I'm I agree with John and Fred. I don't have any problem with the extension um and if the zva does not uh, you know make the um i don't know if the right word is variance on their special permit but adjust their special permit so that they can operate during november then it's sort of moot um Joyce, I, i'm inclined to grant it um go ahead john yeah i'm, I'm not as smart as brian is but i i think that we can approve the liquor license extension silent of what the zba does when Quan Quant meets with them 
Um, and I actually think that it would be a, an indication to the ZBA that we are, we're, we're fully supportive of this request. So I, mm -hmm. unless Brian tells me that that's not the appropriate process, where it's a process that we can't take, I would, I would make a motion to extend the liquor license um, for a quant quant and you know, pending obviously the ZBA approval of whatever the ZBA has to approve of. Is that, is that, um, are we breaking any laws or becoming in compliant if we do that, Brian, that you're aware of? No, um, I think that's perfectly fine. If, if you were to vote to extend it to November 30th and the ZBA decides not to grant a special permit extension, it's, it's really a moot point. Um, yeah. I think my understanding from Quant Quant is that really time is of the essence in terms of trying to reschedule, mm -hmm. you know, reschedule these events. Um, okay. So, so those extra few days would actually help. I mean, we'll have any, another meeting in a couple of weeks, but it, you're saying those, um, there'd be like, they, like, it puts another week in the, in the line. Yeah, I mean, if you think yeah. about it, it's not just Quan Quan, it's the poor people who have put their wedding plans on hold, which, mm -hmm. you know, my heart bleeds yeah. for them. Yeah. No offense well, I to would, Quan Quan. I would support that motion. Are you ready to make the motion, John? I have made it. Uh, do I hear a second? A second. Um, all of those in favor? John? Yes. Fred? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay. Good luck with the uh, with the next board you have to see. And Thank I really you, hope things work out that you're able to reschedule people. Thank you very much. Good no, you're welcome. Take care. Stick around Before for more time if you like, but... <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Stay healthy. Okay. Can I, can I ask just Anne and Janelle to stay on for a minute? Sure. Uh, Joyce, I would like to mm -hmm. maybe as a public comment and something to, to to think about. I guess I maybe should have ran it by Brian first, but I didn't. Uh, for our annual town meeting coming up, you know, we need a place where we can do social distancing and and still. Uh, to accommodate a fair number of people. And one, and so we need a place big enough to do that. Uh, I know Quanqua Farms has, as a meeting house, uh, fairly good size. You also have an outdoor pavilion, fairly good size. And I just had this thought that if, you know, I think we're, we're looking at the school, we haven't decided, our elementary school, if it's not big enough, once you, figure out the social distancing, uh, whether we could go to Quanquat Farms and, and use their facility. I, I'm not looking for an answer today, but just to throw that out as an option. And, and, and so you're aware, I, I guess maybe Brian would, would follow up with you on it if, if we need to, but just uh, my own thinking that we have this venue that, that accommodates people uh, that maybe we should use it for a town function as well if we need additional space. So, Hey, Fred, to that point, I have honestly never taken the square footage of the elementary school gymnasium, and I admit I've never done the same with the Quan Quan Farm meeting space, but I'm hard-pressed to believe that our gym is not larger than the Quan Quan meeting space. Well, I, I don't know if you look at just the – inside the building uh, space or, or you look outside, they've got a patio and, and a pavilion uh, that's fairly good size. Uh, uh, so we have approximately uh, 4,000 square feet inside the building that's usable. That doesn't include kitchen or bathrooms. <clears throat> and then we have a patio outside and then we have the pavilion. So the pavilion is meant to seat about a hundred, well, 180 people or so, but that's close together. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to do some calculation. Um, and I don't know what date the town meeting is at this point, but. It um, mm -hmm. um, would be a Tuesday. Yeah, well, if uh, Brian wants to be in touch and take a look at the space, uh, we'll, we'll welcome you to consider it as an option. What's, what's the capacity of your barn? Uh, it's about 200. And what's capacity of our school? Do we know, Jonathan? No, but I mean, if, if mm -hmm. we use a fraction of that gymnasium, 
uh, and even people are, are, are pushed together, obviously. But as you know, Fred, you look out in the gymnasium and there are more people sometimes on the bleachers than there are in the seats. And yeah. you have a lot of space that it, you could put seats six feet apart or eight feet apart. And, and I mm. think you could do it. But again, I, I don't, I don't, I don't pick up those kinds of things. I, it's just not my bailiwick. Yeah. So I could be okay. way off. Okay. okay. Well, I'm gonna... I appreciate your willingness to, um, to work with us if that turns out to be the case. Sure. No problem okay, at all. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Okay. All right. Have a good day. No, thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Okay. We're zooming through this agenda. We've got uh, an item five, though. That's kind of a heavy one. Um, COVID-19 state of emergency. We need to discuss, review, and consider modifications to our directive limiting work in town buildings, uh, which has actually a longer title, and then the directive on employee pay, and the emergency order restricting public access to town buildings. So why don't we start with that first one, the directive limiting work in town buildings only to essential activities by essential employees and board members and requiring employees to work <coughs> from home or remain on call to perform essential functions. Um, uh, and maybe uh, pe the people who work for the town who are on here might chime in and say about how you think that is working right now given the governor's extended the stay at home another uh, couple of weeks uh, it seems like if we can we should stick with that but are there any modifications that folks are suggesting on that i think from my side of things it seems to be working pretty well um we Basically, we'll have one or two people in the building, but usually on either end of the building. Uh, so we don't have too much contact with one another. Mm -hmm. um, and we certainly can continue on for, at, at, in my opinion, as far as my office is concerned, we could continue on for a couple more weeks, three more weeks, whatever it is. Okay. I do meet people out in the parking lot occasionally for things that just have to get done. So um, mm -hmm. I don't allow them in the building. I meet them at the parking lot and marriage intentions and things like that we do out in the parking lot. So, mm -hmm. okay. Um, With masks and sanitation. <laughs> kind of like Vegas drive through weddings. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Um, Keith or Brian? Hey, I have one thing I'd like to see modified to my arrangement, and that is um, when I last spoke, the last meeting, I was talking about having only one employee in a vehicle at a time. Um, we've encountered a situation where, like, if I need to go drop an, a vehicle off or go pick one somebody up or something like that, what I'd like to see amended is that if I have two people in a vehicle that they both wear a mask. That's the, what I'd like to see modified. Okay, so if I understand what I'm hearing, you're saying sometimes it's kind of unavoidable to have two people in a vehicle, like for picking up and dropping off vehicles, for one thing. Um, and uh, you'd like the ability to have two people in a vehicle, but you're uh, willing to say, that, oh, then both of them should be wearing masks. Yes. In those conditions. Correct. How frequently is that, Keith? How what? How frequently is that happening? Not, I don't really, it's very uncommon, but I just don't want to, I'm trying not to be in a situation where I say I'm going to only have one person in a vehicle and then all of a sudden be mm. in a jam where I need to go pick mm. somebody up, especially like if we're moving like equipment around a tractor or um, the bucket loader, things that are not conducive mm. to driving back and forth at lunchtime or something of that nature. Is this like once a week, twice a week, once a day? Um, probably a, once or twice a week. It's not, not usually an everyday occurrence. I, it, it, you know, it, I trust that Keith has the, the, the safety and health of his employees in mind. If, if I would encourage it to be as minimal as possible um, but if it has to happen, it has to happen. Yeah. 
So Brian, as far as you know, does that, does that sound like it's consistent with what um, health boards and um, other groups are, are uh, recommending? When people do have to be um, in some proximity, sounds if you're in the same truck, I'm guessing you're three to four feet apart and not six feet apart. Um, yeah, I think I think it's consistent with with what's being recommended. I I don't have any problem with that. I I think as long as it's not all the time, that's fine with me. The the one question that I have. It is, it, are there any instances where one of those people could have been in contact with other people or close proximity to other people in the course of their work and then they're getting picked up or is this really just no. N never? No, it, they're, they're not going to have any association or contact with, it's not like I'm talking about going to like uh, an auto body shop or something like that, where they're going to have contact with other people. I'm talking right here in town, just to go from here to like Poplar Hill Road at lunchtime, and something of that nature, where it's just the just the us, no other contact with any outside people. Okay. Well, um, uh, then I guess we would need to move a small amendment to our um, current directive um, and let me give a stab at it. Um, yeah, I move that we amend the director directive to allow the highway department to have two persons in a vehicle, uh, both must wear masks in those conditions um, and when necessary. So two people in the vehicle when necessary, and both people shall be wearing masks under those conditions. Okay, second. All those in favor? John? Yeah. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay. Um, do I hear any further discussion of those directives? Because what I'm hearing so far is that they're mostly working fine. We had a small amendment. Uh, we had a, another amendment last time that we're, we're kind of tink tinkering with them around the edges, but they're mostly working fine. Okay, that well, sounds like that one. Um, and do we need to put a, a, a date on the extension of that, Brian? Um, we, just, we just usually have it done. Until further notice. Until further but, notice. Okay. But to but to be reviewed, in this case, our our next meeting I think would be May thirteenth. Okay. All right. Then with the understanding, we review again on May thirteenth. Okay. All right. Um, then why don't we go on to the directive on employee payroll? Um, it says through April twenty ninth, and that is means this one we might have to. Um, uh, amend if we want it to go forward still. Uh, maybe, Brian, can you kind of catch us up on what's going on there? This was, this was the, um, the decision of the select board. Mm -hmm. Let me pull it up here. Um, that all town employees shall be paid for the regular hours, regardless of whether they're required to come to work. Um, in, for the period Starting March 24th, it was amended through April 20, 29th, 2020. The select board expects all employees to work from home when possible or be on call for performing essential functions. That was essentially the decision that that mm -hmm. employees would um, continue to be paid their, yeah. their regular hours, um, regardless of whether they're come to work or not. The expectation is that everybody is working from home wherever possible. Which I and think as, the, as far as you can tell, is that working out that people are actually more or less working their hours and getting their job done, albeit from home in many cases, or on the days that they are allowed in the town office? Uh, my understanding is, is yes. Um, I don't think there's, I don't, I don't know of anything that's not getting done. Um, so I, I don't have a concern in 
from that aspect of it. I think, depending on where people live, I think it's, in terms of internet access, it's easier for some people than others. Mm, of course. But um, I, I think overall it's, I think overall there's stuff for, there's things for people to do. What, what do you think the, what do you think the, the, the hours reality is right now? Do you think they're, they're, do you think they can perform, they are performing their full function from home or is it just because there's just less going on? Are they working less hours just because there's less required of them? I don't know. I'm just asking. Um, it's hard to tell from an hour standpoint, um, in terms of, in terms of work getting done, I, I, I don't have any issues with work not getting done. Right. Uh, I, I think some, some of the work may be done at non-traditional hours based on. Who cares about those. that? Right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but I mean, uh, most important to me is that, is that work's getting done and it's not falling through the cracks. Um. Well, let me ask uh, Keith, are all your employees coming to work every day? Yes. Yes, they are. Oh, okay. Okay. And obviously Jim and Don are, are covering their shifts regularly, as are the part-timers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like we've got something that's working reasonably well. It's keeping people employed. It's keeping town business uh, moving forward as best we can. Um, and it's, um, uh, you know, I, I don't see any reason to tinker with it since it's really achieving those um, objectives. Uh, my understanding is this directive goes through April 29th. Um, and I know pay periods and select board meetings don't always line up. Uh, but what would be the most reasonable date to put on this should we vote for an extension at, the, uh, at this meeting? Well, I would think it'd have to be no later than May 18th, right? Isn't that what the governor said? Yeah, I think we would want to review it at the next meeting. For the next um, meeting? Even if it were right. a pay period, I think that's that's okay. Right. Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought because this one said 20, April 29th, and we knew we were meeting on uh, today, which is the 29th, right? That we yeah. put the, yeah. I mean, that, is that directive different from the others um, in the sense that we have to keep renewing it? Or is it one that is until further notice and we just review it? Um, uh, this one is worded differently. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. So I, I think it's good to have a – well, I, I guess the uh, I guess the only difference would be, let's say, the select board couldn't meet May 13th, then I guess this would end. Um, mm -hmm. Or couldn't meet before May 13th, this would end, and right. folks would have to start tracking their hours. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Well, we know it's going to be till the 18th at least. So we could give ourselves a little wiggle room and say till the 18th. And then with the understanding that we're going to review it on the 13th. Would that be a reasonable thing to do? It gives us a little wiggle room if we have to postpone the meeting for the 14th or the 15th or something like that. Yeah, I'm that fine with it, but I, have a, I have a question for Lynn first. And I, I don't like to ask the question, but I think we're remiss if we don't. Are you forecasting any cash shortfalls? Right now, no. Um, cash is, I mean, payments are coming in. Uh, the biggest thing will probably be whether the state determines that they are going to do like C9 cuts. Um, that could have a little bit of impact. But right now, people are paying their taxes because of the extended deadline till June 1st. Um, normally, I would have a pretty good idea that things are going to be paid as of um, May 1st because it's only a couple of days away. But because of the extension, things are coming in a little bit slower. Uh, but we do have enough in reserves right now to keep us going for a while. Do you have a sense of what percentage of tax bills are paid through escrow? 
Um, I, I've gotten one of the escrow companies, um, actually two of the escrow companies, the big one, which is, um, usually about $180,000. Um, they're going to wait until the end of May. Mm. They'd rather have it in their bank account than. Uh, I think so. <laughs> they yeah. sent out a survey asking whether the towns had extended the deadline. And of course mm. they're going to take advantage of that. So. Um, but that's the biggest one. Uh, the other two that I have, like, um, have already paid. And, and were they 100% payment? Or yes. were they consistent payments? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'll make a motion. We extend the, uh, this directive on employee pay through May 18th. I'll second that. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, all those in favor, John? Yep. Yep. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay. Very good. Um, the le next one is the emergency order restricting public access to town buildings. Um, that was on uh, March 24th, revised on April 8th. Um, do we have any reasons to amend or reconsider that? Uh, I am not aware of any, but maybe Brian or Lynn or Keith or John, somebody has a. I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Then with uh, taking no action, it means we just, this is on the agenda for the May 13th meeting and we reconsider things at that time. Yep. Okay. Um, and then next on the COVID-19 list is to discuss, review, and consider voting to adopt the proposed town election COVID-19 contingency plan for the annual town election scheduled for June 9th. And that was in our packets. And I think it's an awesome plan myself. Um, and I would, uh, I don't see any need to add, subtract, or divide by anything. Um, I did um, uh, offer to Lynn that we could put the voter, uh, sorry, the absentee or early voting ballot application as a page in the scoop because the scoop is going out in the, um, should be in the post office by May 11th. So the timing works out very nicely and that means everybody will get this application in their mailbox and if I squeeze it down I can fit two of them on one piece of paper. So two people in a household will have a paper copy that they could fill out, snap a photo of an email to Lynn to start their, uh, you know, their mail-in ballot process. Um, so that's not te technically written in there except that she mentioned she would use the scoop. So I thought I'd put that out as something to let people know we effectively are going to have a townwide mailing for next to nothing in cost. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a great suggestion, Joyce. Um, of course, we're encouraging people to vote by mail. However, we it is by law that we still have to have hours for the actual election day. I'm um, requesting that the selectmen approve uh, lesser hours for that day of noon to six, rather than the usual 10 to seven. Um, I don't want to limit them too much because then if there is a huge group of people who really do want to vote in person, you're, you're putting them into say a four hour period. So I figure a six hour period and, and taking in that five o'clock crowd that um, is usually our biggest group of people from five to six. Um, granted, a lot of people aren't working right now, but um, if they are working, then they have that opportunity. Uh, but again, I really am encouraging the early voting by mail, which is a great option for us at this point in time. And also the fact that I would also need a vote from the select board um, authorizing the change of location. Um, that has to be an official vote of the select board. Uh, I believe that the school is a better option in this situation. Uh, we can do a lot more um, social distancing at the school than we could um, at the town offices. Uh, you know, if they're going out the door for any reason and you don't want to have too many people actually in the office, 
um, or in the um, voting area, then they'd be headed out the door. At the school, we have a much larger area to spread those people out for six feet. Um, and plus even outside is covered. Uh, mm -hmm. The only other thing um, in the plan that I was questioning a little bit was the, um, the masks situation um, requiring the use of masks, which I think we can do. Um, but if someone refuses, we can't tell them they can't vote. So we do have to have the alternative of clearing a location for them, having them vote. Um, and the other thing was um, we had talked about when I mail the ballot out, having um, the return envelope have uh, postage paid on it. Um, so uh, that is something that we normally don't do. People are required, but in this particular situation, it may be a, a nice gesture to um, have the return envelope with the ballot postage paid. Okay. So basically, uh, I'm looking for the, the selectmen to approve the new location um, and allowing that postage paid envelope and the change in hours. Okay, I have two two questions or comments, I guess. One is, I know, Lynn, you talked about the uh, people showing up without masks. Uh, are, are you going to provide them a mask if they yes. show up without one so they yes. can at least go through? Yes. Okay. Cause... I've talked to Jim and there is a, uh, uh, right now we think the inventory of the regular surgical masks is good enough to, and I of course will uh, replenish that inventory um, to supply enough masks for people to vote that day. My guess is I've already received a lot of early voting applications. So those people who are voting in person, I'm not expecting it to be maybe a hundred people. And I'll, I will certainly have, you know, two or 300 masks available. Right. And the other thing I noticed in their language on hiring the election workers to be under age 60, is that something that we can Say in a, in I'm going to have to spread my wings here a little bit and and uh, get I, that's I'm looking for younger folks. I know, but um, is that something that should be in that plan, or are we? Biased? Well, it's a, it's a goal to strive for. It's not a requirement. It's goal. Okay. It says that um, we will. I think it's that. Uh, I'm just trying to find the wording on it. Oh, um, of course, now that I'm looking for it, I can't find it. Um, but I think it's worded in here as a goal to hire uh, election workers under 60. Fred, Fred, I think okay. what you're getting, I think what you're getting at is, is, can we use age as a determinant, right? Um, and if that's the case, I, I think there's a compelling justification that that we can. Um, I, I think we can use age under these specific circumstances. Okay. I've got, I've got two questions, Lynn. Um, yeah. The first one is, I, I wonder whether and because i totally understand the 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 interest in in shrinking the number of hours because i don't think it's going to be necessary but i wonder whether we should do one to seven instead of two to six just because of that five to six rush the law states that the election has to start no later than noon oh okay i i would have liked to have done that too but the law says it has to be for at least four hours not starting um, any later than noon. Okay. The, the other thing that I, I think these types of, of requirements, if you will, of people, I don't think ambiguity is good. And so I would, I would cite specific numbers of times where people, where workers should be washing their hands as opposed to often, because <laughs> often is very subjective. What, what, how often I think 
is important to wash hands. It might be very different than, than somebody <laughs> sitting next to me and that comfort level might be, be strained. So I would, I would put in there, you must wash your hands, you know, every hour, whatever it is, I would put a finite number on it. Okay. I can yeah. do that. Like at least, cause it could be that you might need to do it more, but yeah. a, a minimum might be a good thing to put in there, I guess. Yeah, I, I agree. Like a minimum once an hour, whatever the, whatever the health recommendations are. I don't know, but. I don't know that there is an actual recommendation no. under the, it's just frequent hand washing is what I always hear. So, you know, once an hour, I don't know. I, okay. You know. I can do that. <laughs> Um, there was one other, uh, the script to mm. ask people about their health for that day. Um, yeah. It, it, it's a little uncomfortable to be asking people those questions. However, I think in most cases, people will understand. Um, and the likelihood that if they aren't feeling well, that they're, they're going to tell you that they aren't feeling well is, but it's here, you know, it's in the plan. Um, I think the, the big thing here is making sure we still have the social distancing for every voter and that every voter has a face covering of some sort. Um, you know, if someone comes in and they've been exposed and tell me they haven't been, there's not much I can do about that. Hopefully people will be honest, uh, mm -hmm. straightforward, and allow, we'll still allow them to vote. It's just we'll have to treat the situation a little differently. I might yeah, suggest I that, important that uh, as I read that, I remembered reading it this morning, that, um, that nobody's turned away, even if they have a temperature, even if they have a fever, they can still come in and vote. Correct. But you just want, you want to be able to clear the room. Right. Maybe uh, eliminate the, as many of the hazards as possible <laughs> for those other voters, as well as my election staff and the, the voter themselves. So. And maybe some synopsis of this could go in the various um, places where you, uh, where you say to get the information out to people, you have the information plan. Right. Um, maybe that can go in there, that we yeah. will be asked, but you won't be turned away right. uh, for voting. Right. We'll just use different precautions for people who, who answer yes. And that's, I think, right. I think people in Waitley would understand that. Yeah, I hope can so. Can I make a suggestion? And I, because I like the idea, but it's my idea, so I'm supposed to like it. <laughs> we're, we're, we're currently paying a school nurse um, I, I, I don't think it's a bad idea to ask that nurse to bring one of those handheld forehead temperature gauges that I know people put it in my forehead anytime I go a lot of places. Um, and if it reads whatever the degree is that is uns that it would be deemed, I have to treat you differently, then... They are treated differently. So it's, then you're not asking an uncomfortable, subjective question. You're, it's, it's very objective because of the data that the nurse has because of the forehead temperature taken. I can uh, check that out with uh, the nurse at school. But isn't that saying now we're doing a form of testing? No, they still get to vote. They just get to, we, we just, to Lynn's point, we clear the room. I know, but it's, it's not like a we're, test. Now we're I mean, talking they're about not going to be able to determine whether they're a positive person. I mean, they could just have, you know, a cold. Right. You know, we, we are. It's not a test that's going to be decisive and determine that. It's just we're going to take extra precaution. <clears throat> okay, and, and I assume you're going to read them them questions. Yes. Would it be easier if you handed them a, a copy of it and say, do you have any of these symptoms for them to read? Would it get quicker response than you reading each one? I, I could I do that. that. Yeah. I doubt it would be faster to hand someone something to read than to just 
speak it. Right. Yeah. Again, you go to a doctor's office, they ask you the questions. They're not asking you to read it. They ask you the questions directly. Yeah. Right. I, I, think it, I think it makes someone be more forthright with how they're feeling. And that's, and that's added to by if we can get the nurse to be willing to come and as part of her, her employment for the town, take people's temperature, you know, assuming that they have the forehead thing because you don't want this to be a laborious process. But, you know, that forehead reader is a half a the second. The town has acquired a couple of those ourselves, so okay. we can, yeah. yeah. Or, or Lynn, if the nurse doesn't do it, you know, maybe, well, I don't want to add, add the payroll costs, but, you know, maybe, maybe an EMS person would be willing to do it. I, I don't know. I just think that that's a, nice, that's a nice feature that makes your life a little easier. Okay. I'll talk to Chrissy and see what she says. Okay. Um, but uh, but my understanding is that that uh, the, there are certain points about this plan that you need us to sign off on. Um, other things like the investigating what's the best way to do temperature, um, and there was one or two other things that people mentioned that those could be um, updated without us having to approve. There at this point, I, yes, I would it, think so. I'll get it to Brian's, and he can forward it. I'll make the changes and he can forward it to you with those changes in it. Um, okay. the, but the big things I do need from the board are the change of location to the Waitley Elementary School, the um, change of times for the elections, and just the approval of using the prepaid envelopes, which I, I think the funding is there. It's just yeah. thought it would be nice to get your approval on that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> can I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to, to uh, change the location of voting to the elementary school from the hours of 12 noon to 6 p.m. and to allow for mailing and, and return addressing of uh, the ballots. I would second that. Um, all of those in favor, John? Yes. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yep. Okay. All right, great. I think we have a plan. And for, Sounds good. For those watching, the date of the annual election is? June 9th. June 9th, right? Yep. Yep. All right. Okay. Everyone will actually have to receive a postcard saying that the location has moved. So, um, it, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, they'll be, should be aware. Um, okay. do we want to talk to Chrissy about her sign to get something on their, on their uh, sign by the road that says, Oh, that we could do that. Election here, June 9th. Yep. Okay, great. Is there anything else on this before we move on to the next item? which is uh, possible dates and locations for annual town meeting. Which is something we touched on a little bit earlier. Uh, my understanding is um, what we really need out of this meeting is a target date uh, for people to work with. Um, it, we don't necessarily have to decide the location tonight, but we really should have uh, a date for boards to work with. Would that be a reasonable summary of what you think we need, Brian? Um, yeah, we need to work towards um, a date, really for budget purposes, whether that be a, a full FY21 budget or a 112 budget. Um, I, I think my plan is to prepare both um, because we don't really know what um, mm -hmm. what the future holds. We're expecting additional guidance from uh, DLS on the 112 budget for towns. Um, mm -hmm. It's always been an option for cities, but it, it's new for towns with the, the passage of the legislation. So mm -hmm. um, we're waiting for guidance as to what that process will be. Um, finance, I, I did have a call with Paul and Taya, the chair of the finance committee, and they've set a couple dates um, that they intend to meet. Um, 
I think if we're going to have a target date prior to um, June 30th, I think I would recommend uh, June 23rd. Um, it's a conversation that, that's what we were leaning towards when I was when I was talking with Paul. Um, that should still give us time if if we need the 112 budget to to work with with the LS to to get that in place. But yeah. So when you say the need for a 112 budget, my understanding was we would need that if we could not pass a budget at our annual town meeting. Prior um, to we get passed to June, Ju oh, sorry, July 1st, we would need to use a 112 budget. Is that, yes. is that right? And so setting a date increases the chances that we pass a budget. It doesn't, of course, guarantee that we pass a budget, but um, it sounds like uh, it would not be because the finance committee and the boards could not come to agreement on a budget to bring to the town. Like there's plenty of time to get that done by the 23rd. Is that my, if I'm hearing that right? Yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, at this point, earlier this week, I was able to compile all the budgets that we have as submitted. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a, a full comprehensive budget. Um, it's just, we just need to look at the changing economic conditions and have discussions about about how we want to proceed with a great amount of uncertainty um, in fiscal year 21 in terms of what we'll get for local receipts and what we'll get for state aid. Um, we haven't received much direction from the state as of yet. Um, the longer we wait, the chance, hopefully the chances are we'll get better information, but even uh, they're going to be working off economic models as well. And there's uncertainty with those. So, yeah. Um, so if we were to, could we actually make a motion and decide on a date and then have a discussion about possible locations? Would that be a reasonable way to proceed? What do you think, John and Fred? Fine. Well, let me ask is something in, in, in June, is there, there's a June day out for, did the governor say something about schools closed till the 28th? No, they're closed for the year. For the rest of the year. Like, was there something on June 28th, some date? I, I think that has to do with, um, I'm, I'm guessing here, but I think it has to do with child care centers. But I'm not positive. I think that's right, Brian. Oh, okay. Okay, well then I would, um, I'll go ahead and make the motion um, that we uh, aim for June 23rd for our annual town meeting uh, and have further discussions about location, but if we have a date, then committees can work on the date or we can work, you know, towards that deadline uh, date. So um, I'm moving the 23rd. Any seconds? Second. Um, okay. All those in favor, John? Yes. Fred? Yes. Yes. Okay, we have a date. Um, and then locations from earlier in the meeting, we're certainly considering the elementary school gym. Um, I sent an email to the principal and have not heard back yet about what um, the capacity of the gym might be. I assume that she's going to you know, be asking somebody uh, uh, from the facilities staff at Union 38 there to um, help determine that. Um, Fred brought up the possibility of quant quant. We don't know what the capacity there would be with social distancing, but those seem to be kind of the two top contenders. The other thing you can do is um, we could actually at the elementary school expand into the cafeteria. Yep. You can, I mean, we have done things in multiple rooms before back at town hall years and years ago, we had a meeting upstairs in a, and downstairs um, mm -hmm. had to have a moderator in both rooms, but they, with the cafeteria that would add some additional space. Yeah. Um, you know, it, the Lynn, what was the number of last year's town meeting? Do you have that committed to memory? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, let, let's say arguably that it was about, a it's one, usually about 120. Yeah, so let's use 120. I, I'd say easily half the gym wasn't being used. 
So I, and uh, the only thing we would have to do quarters, probably is, is perhaps purchase more of the floor covering that, the, that they put the seats, that they set the seats up on. Mm -hmm. But I, I think if you put all those chairs six to eight feet apart from each other, both, both vertically and horizontally, you could fit a hundred people in the, in the, in the gym. And I honestly don't think you're going to get that many. And, and you, I think it's more than a hundred John in the gym. Yeah. And then there's the bleachers um, say top and bottom row are going to be something like six feet apart. And um, lots of people like to sit there um, overflow in the cafeteria. I, I mean, it's a smaller space. And it's often set up with tables, but you could put two people at a table and they're still six feet apart. And there, I think the potent, there's, there's, for the number of people we would expect at a relatively non-controversial um, town meeting, I don't see, uh, I don't foresee anything particularly controversial on this particular warrant that's coming. I, don't I agree. Um, are, we, are we looking at just a... Uh, Social distancing meeting, or are we looking at remote meeting as well, or not, or not remote? We're not allowed to do remote. I think uh, if people wanted to come in, I would have no problem with letting people see the meeting remotely with Zoom. But um, right now, you can't vote if you're observing remotely. Right. So you can have the meeting open for people to watch. But if you want to vote, you actually have to be there. But are we going to take questions through Zoom or comments through Zoom? Good idea. I, I think there's we we could we can do what we decide to do. I think on that they can ask questions. They just can't vote. Yeah, we can take we could. Yeah, there's no law against us taking questions from people. Who That's a good are idea. Zoom. As long as they're registered voters. Taking questions. Yes. Oh, we don't because have because technically those people who are not registered voters is supposed to have permission from the moderator um, and town meeting in order to vote. In order I mean, to in vote. order to to participate in town meeting. Oh, I did not know that. Then it sounds like it might not be realistic to be able to verify voters and so on for people yeah. who. Yeah. Then it may be unrealistic to have people ask questions via Zoom. They can certainly watch, but. But right. there's there's no problem with people watching. Um, that would not that would be. I, I mean that I would think that would be a nice thing to do because there may be people who do just want to keep track of what's going on and they're uh, but they'd rather not leave their home. Um, okay, so. but under the social distancing guidelines, is there still a limit on the number of people that can gather in one area? Uh, the limit does not apply to municipal legislative bodies, which town okay. meeting falls under that category. Okay. So, so it would not be illegal for us to have the meeting so long as we uh, maintain social distancing um, and plan for that. And that means it'll take longer to set up That'll, um, and we may have to, like, uh, I think John's suggestion or whoever's suggestion was was a good one to get more floor covering because we can't gather all the chairs into the middle like we normally do. We have to um, spread them out a bit more. Right. And, and, and they just put an awful lot of money into what is now the nicest gym floor in the region. So we yeah. don't want to mess that up. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we don't have to come to a conclusion on that, but I, what I guess what I'd like for the next meeting, if at all possible, is um, an estimate that we can, uh, a you know, reasonable estimate that we're confident in about the number of people who could attend in the gym and the number of people who could attend with uh, overflow in the cafeteria. Um, I would imagine a screen so that people can see what's going on better <coughs> in the gym if you happen to be in the cafeteria and I mean, there'd be some technology to plan for. So I, I would hope by our next meeting, we could firmly decide and then you know, have a reasonable estimate so we can provision, provision the cafeteria for overflow. Um, if that looks like it might be necessary. 
Joyce, I also think that um, we need to have some staff or volunteerism at the at, if it's at the school, the entrance to the school and in the foyer to make sure that people are entering, you know, in a in a in a in a organized fashion because people tend to cluster. They won't have seen each other for a very long time. Potentially, they're going to want to catch up. I think we need structure and organization around that, and I think we need to to, to drive that. Well, okay. that and 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 the, the use of masks, if we're still going to require that or not. Absolutely. I think we can all we can recommend, but I'm not sure. Maybe Lynn or, or Brian can can um, correct me, but I'm not sure we can refuse a registered voter entrance to town meeting if they don't want to wear a mask. Can we make them have a larger social distance? I don't know. I think having masks available for people who don't have them would certainly be a good idea. But maybe that's something we have to figure out. Are we, would we be allowed to turn someone away if they're not willing to wear a mask at town meeting? I don't know, but isn't, uh, I don't know if this relates to this, it would help us or not. Isn't our governor gonna come up with some additional guidance on how we can get back to normal and what's social distancing and masks and all that? Maybe that'll help us by June, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but we have to make some decisions in the next week or two. And well, we yeah, location was as far as as uh, I think we have to make the decisions with the social distancing that we have now. If it gets loosened up later, then things can be loosened. But it's easier to loosen than to tighten things up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. So, if, so I think I heard Joyce say we need to find out, someone needs to find out what the rules are going to be around whether you can require masks at town meeting. Yeah. There's been a little controversy with that at this point in time, but um, I think the Board of Health can actually do a directive that mm. requires uh, the use of masks in social situations. So, um, but they have not really done that yet I don't think a right. formal sort of thing but um, there there's been a couple of um, things out by the AG's office on determining whether you can enforce those guidelines mm -hmm. or not so we'll keep checking on that yeah okay Good idea. Yeah. yeah the most recent guidance that that Lynn's talking about was originally the guidance came out when it said municipalities it was an open question and then the new guidance that was sent out said that a municipality through its Board of Health, under the term, use all possible care to prevent the spread of infection, may include an issue, um, may include issuing an order, reasonable regulations to require people to wear face coverings in public. You know, there's, but there is some concern about people who may have um, health concerns when putting on a mask and how do we mm. handle handle that situation. A, a blanket order requiring all people to wear a mask may not be, it, it's, it's nuanced, let's put it that way, right? Well, and our, our Board of Health would understand those nuances, though, right? I would, think, I would hope so, I would think so. Is, I'm is sorry, our, Fred, I think I cut you off. Is our Board of Health checking on these businesses that are open to see if they're following that? Um, they are visiting open businesses, yes. They are okay. Yeah. yeah, I think we should we should go down the path that we will require masks until we're told that we cannot require masks. And you know, hey, as long as Mike Pence doesn't show up without a mask and say yeah. your rules are not for me, then we're fine. So, so we're going with Mike Pence, huh? Well, you saw what he did in the Mayo Clinic. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like at our next meeting, we'll try to gather more information about capacity with social distancing at the school, um, whether, and maybe we should also look at the last, I don't know, let's say three, four years worth of town meeting, uh, annual town meeting attendance, um, then that might, uh, that might give us some idea. We know for, we'll have um, the voter list will tell us 
how many voters were there, there's right. probably a, a predictable number of non-voters there, like folks from the schools who don't live in town and such. Right. Um, so then we can kind of match up our estimates of how much space there is with estimates of how many people will be there. And, um, and let that, let that guide our decision uh, next time. Because I think we should, you know, by the 13th, we, if we're thinking it's, that's going to be like only four or five weeks before the date. Um, we may have to be working with FCAT at that point to get, not to get a big screen in there, for example, into the cafeteria and appropriate microphones and so on, maybe some speakers, that sort of thing. So, yeah. Okay. And we'll also need additional, I think you also, you also need additional counters and. Right? You need a, like I mean, an assistant moderator uh -huh. as well. So. And like John was saying, someone at the entrance to kind of, Hey, move along folks. Yeah. We've yeah. got to, we've got to regulate the, the entrance so that people can go in and then, you know, just like the store does with, you know, you have to be a, 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 a grocery basket away from each other or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do we okay. need to make sure the custodial staff there is is available to set up the chairs and whatever? Because I assume they're not working now at school. And they, for, for our meetings, don't they usually have a nighttime custodian there? They go in on occasion to check on the, the building system. So um, I think we would be able to ask them to set it up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there any further discussion um, about potential locations for <clears throat> the annual town meeting? Anything else on that? Okay. Then let's, uh, the last item under COVID-19 is update on the senior residents' meals and outreach. I understand we got an email from the senior center director. Why don't I let Brian do that? Yeah, Christina, the, the South County Senior Center Director has been sending out a um, kind of a weekly email update as to the meals that are being distributed through the, through the Senior Center. Um, so that's appreciated and the work they're doing is very much appreciated. And as of last week, there were 27 meals that went to Whitley residents through, through the South County Senior Center. Um, I think there was a similar amount um, the previous week. Um, we've also um, th there's kind of a tag team effort for outreach calls to seniors. Originally, it was the South County Senior Center. We had prepared a list of um, senior residents within town. I think there was something around 750. It was a, quite a big number. It's a lot. Uh, so we, there's also two members of the Whitley Council on Aging that have, that have volunteered to make some of the calls as well. Um, so there's a there's a coordinated effort to uh, make contact with uh, senior residents in town and find out how they're doing and um, what needs they have, if any. Yeah, they're doing, they're doing a great job. They're doing a really good job there. Um, they're working well with, with the food delivery people. Um, the, 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 the food people wanted to go to, to cold meals that would get heated up in a microwave and they pushed back on that to make sure the seniors still got a warm meal. Um, there's an effort to um, try to develop uh, a larger pen pal effort. Um, and so it, it would be great if we could figure out a way to get perhaps some elementary school kids to write to write back and forth to give seniors something to do and read in, you know, because obviously the isolation is, is, is potentially toughest on them. Um, there is also in the works, the plans for a, to try to figure out a zoom call for all seniors who want to get involved, to get on it so that there can be some social interaction via zoom to help seniors who are on their own or anyone for that matter, obviously. But. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds like um, sounds like these are all good ideas, and and we um, 
Do you have any other um, comments or discussion of the senior residents meals and outreach? I just have a comment on it's, it's related to meals, so it kind of fits, but um, I know Darius is looking into what's going to happen with student meals because typically they stop serving at the end of June once, once school ends. Um, so I, I think there's a little bit more that needs to be thought about um, as okay. to happens beyond June. But that's a conversation. The other end of our age spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. I'm glad he's thinking about that. Okay. All right. Well, can we go on to old business then? Um, our old business, we just have one item. Uh, and that is to discuss the status of the 13 town municipal electricity aggregation collaborative with Colonial Power and next steps. And I know I read their email they sent a little earlier this week, but I'll turn it over to Brian because kind of what's the bottom line do list for us. Um, I think I know what that is, but I'll let Brian say it. Yeah. Um, so I believe that I haven't seen um, but I, the RFP was supposed to go out today, I believe, um, April 29th, and that is to get um, um, that is to get pricing um, on May 13th. There, this this 13 town, uh, whatever we want to call it, 13 towns working together collaborative. Um, they're supposed to Colonial Power is supposed to get the indicative pricing, um, and that's going to give us a sense of of the market costs um, for the different, for the different categories that the 13 towns are trying to get pricing for. Um, and then May 20th is the date that, um, towns need to either say we're in or out, um, based on the pricing that's, that's received that day for the different categories that are going to be available. Um, and the process is such that each town um, each town needs to have an authorized signatory who can execute a contract on behalf of the town. Um, so the pricing comes in and it's a fairly short turnaround. Um, I don't remember how many hours you have to decide, but it was fairly short. Not 24. <laughs> Not 24. Literally like three. Yeah, I thought it was somewhere around that range. Um, we'll have another select board meeting before May 20th, obviously. Actually, we'll have one on May 13th. So we could talk about what the indicative pricing is. Um, so that's at some point we're going to need to designate somebody. Um, mm -hmm. That if we want to go forward, we're going to have to designate somebody to make that decision on, on the 20th. Yeah. And candidates um, might be members of the energy committee, a selectman, or possibly Brian. That I mean, is that kind of a reasonable short list of people to be thinking of for this? I mean, we want people who are informed about what's going on with this, and I think that is sort of the list, right? I, I agree with Joyce on that. And Joyce, I was going to say, if my fellow energy committee member uh, is in earshot, um, then maybe maybe we should plan to have an energy committee meeting via Zoom um, sometime between now and the next select board meeting. Okay, I don't know if he's in the earshot, but uh, I can certainly relay the message. Uh, but probably should go through the usual channels, maybe. Right. Uh, through Brian, call a meeting. I think that would be uh, not unreasonable at all. I mean, we, you could also schedule a meeting for, for that window of May 20th, and it, assuming people are available to, to review the pricing, but we we'll just have one authorized signatory. Yeah. Now, how does it work, Brian, in terms of the, 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 the signing? The, the meeting is going to take place remotely. We can decide whether we're thumbs up or thumbs down remotely, but we can't sign remotely. Or have they figured out a system around that? I I, I have not heard the specifics um, as to how that will go. You know, at some level, having being on Zoom is going to make the 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 decision making process a little more convenient because people will not necessarily have to be in an office; they can discuss it in mm -hmm. this in this uh, format. 
Right. Yeah. So, you know, maybe on the 20th, we have a joint meeting of the select board and finance committee, or not finance, I'm sorry, select board and energy committee mm -hmm. um, immediately after the prices, the price and specifics are, are um, released. Mm hmm. Well, that's a thought. So, um, I, if I remember right, it was, uh, oh, it's, it's in this, it's in the meeting package here. Um, about what time it is on the 20, uh, on the 20th, by 3.30 p.m. Right. Presumably then the prices are coming out a little earlier in the day. Uh, so you'd have to, you'd want to make your meeting something early, like one, you know, and then just get it done. One and done. No, that's not what that usually means. Wait, are you saying, Joyce, that we know we'll have a price by one o'clock? Um, actually, I'm reading that. It says we'd set up calls uh, around 1.30 or 2 p.m. to review, discuss the pricing received. No action required um, on the 20th. We'll ensure... Yeah, so uh, it sounds like they think you'd have prices by 1.30 or 2 p.m., and then they want you to sign by 3.30. So that's a two-hour window at, at most. At most, right. Yeah, so maybe we should have our meeting schedule for like 2.30 to be safe. Gives us an hour to decide. And then well, it gives you an hour to decide and sign. So Oh, it's I not just a verbal, it. so we can't do verbally we're doing it and await our signature? It says signatures required from each town by 3.30 p.m. And we don't know the logistics of the signature. Right. We don't know but that. It, right. Presumably I they're... We'll be able to fax the signature page, but not fax, but email. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm guessing that there'll be something that's workable, but not something that will take 30 seconds. Um, so we, you might want to set it for 1.30, and it might be that you sit around discussing things and you don't get the pricing till 2. You know, um, you've got to just, I, I think it would be better to make it a little earlier rather than later. I think we should count on the price being the last minute <laughs> based upon how this is all done. At 3.29? <laughs> well, it, it sounds like Colonial is going to have a group call, right? Right. We have a group call around one thirty or two. Oh, yeah, but I want. I think. I think we we and Waitley want to have a conversation on our own, as well I, as I'm part of a group call. I, well, I really do. I right. I agree with that. Um, we would meet. I, I guess we would meet after the call. I guess. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. if they want it by three thirty, we can attend the call and then meet afterwards. Yeah, and it could be just a 15 minute meeting of the energy committee and the select board and um, sort out. I mean, I understand there are options that are gonna be presented. My understanding is that for the um, the basic, we we wanted something that is uh, no, no dirtier than the standard option offered by Wamiko and uh, pr and with a lower price. Um, and then we would also have a greener option and there might be several of those to choose from. Right. So there might be a small amount of decision making to be done and that. I would value the input from the energy committee on that. And our ideal was that the greener option be no more expensive than the standard option with the current mix. Yeah. So I think there'll be a minimal amount of decisions to be made. And I, I think personally, I would, I would value our energy committee's input. If we really have to come up with one person to sign on the day of, then I, I mean, I don't mind sorting that out at our next meeting, but I think we know the handful of people who should be doing the signatures. Right. right? Um, and to the extent that we want kind of everybody's, to be kind of in a consensus on it, then we try to have a meeting um, uh, concurrent or right after the pricing meeting. Yeah, okay, we can, we can sort out the, the, the details on that later on. We don't have to do it, that's inside baseball right now. Okay. Is, 
I'm just curious, is, is anybody getting these requests in the mail from this one company, is it Constellation, wants you to sign up to buy energy from them for a three-year agreement? Is anybody getting that? I generally toss those myself, but. I haven't seen a new console from Constellation lately. Constellation, I think, is a company name. I'm getting like every two, three months, they keep sending it to me. Constellation is a ginormous company, Brett. Right. Right. But yeah, they want you to they want you to select them as their energy provider. Right. Yep. I've okay. seen that before. Whichever which which by the way, people will still have that option because they always have the option to opt out of the colonial power uh, pricing and, and and mix that is if, if we go in that direction. We people, you know, Fred. If you and I'm using you as an example, just because you brought it up, yeah. you could to say say to yourself, "I'm, you know what? I'm going to opt out of, of this and go with Constellation because that's what I want to do." That is well within your rights, even after or if the town signs this agreement with with Colonial. Right. Okay. Okay. All righty. So uh, it sounds like we've got a plan on that. Um, the first thing under new business, and thank you, Dee, for your, <clears throat> for your patience waiting to the very um, almost tail end of the meeting. Uh, the first item of business is to discuss the status of Memorial Day 2020 activities. <coughs> and um, my understanding is that um, the Historical Society is looking for some uh, direction from us. Would that be correct, Adelia? Yes. And um, yeah, so I guess direction from us on whether to hold the normal uh, Memorial Day parade, et cetera, um, as we always do, which is a really great, um, it's a really great spring get together. Um, but um, I think I may, oh, Harry, I can hand the hot potato to Brian. Um, <laughs> I, I, I suspect those, those, it's going to, well, sorry, the, the governor has extended the um, social distancing and the other measures like that to through the 18th. And it seems like the Memorial Day event being just one week later might be cutting a little close. I don't know. There's no indication that the 18th is going to be the end of it. So that's my worry is that you know, we're worried to proceed it might be that there's, you know, the, the governor's interceding um, and the and those rules would really prevent you from being able to do it. Well, and the, Joyce, even if, even if the governor started to open things up on the 18th, I think you would see a phased in approach. And I can't imagine that parades will be part of phase one. Especially Frontier band. There will be no band. Yeah, the band is out, right? Yeah, I think I, we're, we, the Grange was really the historical society also, but Fred and, I mean, uh, John and Keith are members of the Grange, and we were concerned because we sort of worked that parade through, and we wanted to have somebody from the town say what your direction was going to be because we don't want to be caught shorthanded as, okay, we're going to have it, when we're kind of thinking, we shouldn't have it because of all the ramifications that are going on. So I think it should, what I was looking for is to have somebody make that decision so that we won't have anybody wondering, are we going to do this? Are we going to do that? So it would be defined a definite answer. Oh, so you want us to make the decision and not you guys. I think that, don't you agree, John and Keith, that's where it should come from? Absolutely. My, my my thoughts on this is, yeah, I, I don't think we're going to be ready to do any kind of a parade or, or school function or anything at the, at the monument, Veterans Monument, center of town. But I, I think something should still be done with, I guess, the placing of, of the wreath at the, at the monument there. And I think at the center cemetery, there's, I think there's a wreath place there as well. And Maybe we could get the, the veterans uh, group to at least do that for us. Uh, maybe 
Jim Ross, or I don't know who's in charge of that, to on that day to to place the the, the two wreaths where we have traditionally been doing that, and and just let it go with that. At least we have some some function, some activity that's happening to honor the veterans for that day. On that day, I I think that's fine, Fred. I. I, I think that's a great idea to make sure we honor the, the veterans uh, on Memorial Day. But I, I honestly think we would be remiss if we if we held the parade, the the uh, festival, the you know it, it just we made sure the wreaths are placed. But I I don't feel comfortable having it. I I think that it sends a really poor signal. Well, yeah, I'm not saying no. We do, I'm, I wasn't saying we do the parade or festival or anything. No, just uh, just placing the wreaths and whatever prayer or ceremony they have for wreath placement, let it be that, and that's it. Yeah, with nobody there. Let's live stream it. We could live stream it, sure, but but I don't think anyone. I don't think we should encourage anyone to to go out there and watch it. No. No, right. just let the the veterans, whether they want one person or two or three or whoever, do it. But I also feel like the role of our board is primarily on this matter, advisory. Right? It's not our it's not our show. Um, but I sounds like what I'm hearing is that our advice is to not hold a big event, but if possible, to do something like a simple ceremony to lay the wreath with appropriate social distancing if that's possible uh, to do that instead and if it's possible to videotape and broadcast it or live stream it then those would be also great options that would be up to the the Grange and whatever other groups are helping the Grange um, but I sort of feel like I don't want to I don't want to give you orders Keith and John I'm just saying this is what we think is appropriate. Um, and it doesn't sound like you want to do a parade anyway. It doesn't sound like you want to have a big gathering. But I think we're kind of in agreement on that. Um, but as to, I, I don't want to dictate the details of any kind of wreath laying ceremony that you might do. That you've got to, you, you know the social distancing um, requirements and they're not likely to be very different after May 18th than before May 18th. Does that make sense? Yes. I, I, would, I would just interject though that we have placed restrictions, this board has placed restrictions on the number of people who can assemble in any public place in town. So we've already done that. You're not allowed to have more than 10 people at Hurley, You're not allowed to have more than 10 people at the playground at the elementary school. You're not allowed to have, you know, the, the buildings are closed. The, and and the cemetery and, and other places that, that, that have activities during this day historically, they're, they're, public, they're public places. And so I think we already have placed those restrictions. I, I think, you know, Adelia, you've heard uh, my thoughts and, and I think Jonathan kind of agrees. Uh, maybe you could touch base with with uh, Jim Ross or the the, the veterans that, that do this uh, ceremony and, and see what they're doing for other towns. I, I guess if they're not doing anything at all, well, I, I guess maybe we could look at it that way. But if they're doing a, a quick wreath ceremony and that's it, well, maybe that's all we need as well. Uh, it's going to come down to maybe what they feel they want to do. And I don't know who that falls on, whether we ask, uh, you know, Jim Ross or I'll bring that name up because he's involved or I don't know if you want Brian to get involved in that or, or even Adelia, but. I've always worked with Ray Belial. Ray, or Ray or even Ray Belial to ask him because I, I guess I would hate for us to require or, or request something be done and nobody else is doing it or nobody else, nobody is available to do it, say. The Grange has always provided the wreaths and uh, Ray Belisle has always had the firing squad. So if you think that is sufficient, I think it will at least let Waitley have something on the, um, uh, uh, on the, in the works for us. And I guess we can take that on. 
Okay, I appreciate that. That's my feeling. I think that kind of coordination should be done and, and I guess tell the board at our next meeting or in the meantime, what you find out. Yeah. Okay, planning. I just felt we needed to have some direction because everybody's asking me, are we going to have a parade? Are we going to do this? And, and uh, John and I talked about it this week and we felt we needed to have something in the works for an answer. And I think you've helped yeah. us immensely. Yeah, okay. Well, it sounds like we were kind of on the same wavelength, same wavelength to begin with. And whatever modified small thing that happens with the wreath laying, I mean, don't let people feel too badly over it. You know, uh, just next time bigger and better, right? So, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Do you all need anything else from us? Are we all set, John, Keith? It was good. Set. Well, I think that's a good plan. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, our next item is to discuss and authorize potentially the town administrator to award contracts for gasoline and diesel fuels for fiscal year 2021. I understand the fuel prices are coming down. Is that what they're uh, saying to you, John, to you, uh, Brian? They have come down, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Normally we always, with, when the gas and diesel, we always partake in the, um, market value price so that it fluctuates and we just go with a markup price. Um, I think Brian and I, when we get the numbers, it may be worth locking in this time around. We'll, we can, I think Brian and I can make that decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what you would need from us is uh, a vote to authorize uh, basically Brian to make that decision, but sounds like he's going to be in consultation with Keith on this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, John, Fred, do you have any? I think it's perfect. That's fine. Yeah, that's right. So, okay. Then I would make a motion. For that we... all vehicles that the town has. I'm sorry. Yeah. And this uh, is for gasoline. Yeah. Yeah. They use gasoline, whatever. Okay. It's all under this one contract. They're not each competing on their own. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I would make a motion then that we authorize uh, Brian, our town administrator, to award contracts for gasoline and diesel fuel for fiscal year 2021. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, those in favor, John? Yes. Fred? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay. All right. Now we're down to the my favorite section. It's the town administrator updates. Jonathan's favorite section, too. Please. There's no, no baseball game to get to. Nine o'clock. There's, there's no baseball game to get to. I know. It's bumming me out. I can't deal with it. <laughs> um, so, Haydenville Road Project, um, It's there was a TPO meeting, so transportation planning organization meeting at the FERCOG yesterday, and it's currently listed for construction on fiscal year 2025. If you, we've talked about this numerous times, it got bumped last year, which we weren't happy about. Um, they didn't vote to make any changes and the plan's out for a 21 day comment period. So we've had success keeping it um, on FY 2025. And that's for, again, this is for federal funding for the construction. The more difficult part is um, how additional engineering is paid for. And right now, MassDOT has committed to funding design through 25%. We had a, a meeting that Natalie Blay had coordinated and Keith and Fred were both there as well. Um, and MassDOT has made no additional commitment to fund design from 25% to final design. So, Obviously, that needs to happen. There's, we're, I think we're aiming for a meeting in June where we're going to find out some additional information in terms of what the additional costs are for um, to bring the project up to full design. Again, this all relates back to the 2014 transportation bond bill where there was four to five million dollars that was included in the transportation bond bill that um, these are my words that the states were negging on doing anything with. 
um, which is disappointing to me. So we're going to have to figure something out. Um, you know, to Fred's point, um, this was during the call, is that it's going it, to, it takes a number of years to get the project in terms of if we need to acquire additional right away and all these additional steps we need to take. It takes probably three or four years for that to happen. So we really need to figure this out quickly. Um, it, it's kind of a unique situation because in most instances, towns or cities are responsible for, for, for the entire design. They pick the designer, they pay for the costs, and we continue on. Now, if MassDOT is not going to fund it, they've had a specific engineering firm that's been working on it, Hoyle and Tanner. And now, both Whitley and Williamsburg, we don't, we don't know how we're going to pick up the design that's been done. And do we, can we use Hoyle and Tanner? Do we want to use Hoyle and Tanner? It, there, there's just a lot, of, a lot of things to figure out. Um, we have another call scheduled. I think it's going to be in June. Natalie's um, hopefully going to work whatever channels she can to try to figure out a solution. Um, but it's a big unanswered question at this point. What's the dollar amount of the 75%, Brian? Um, well, that's one of the things we're going to find out in June. I want to say it's Probably, uh, I mean, engineering costs, what, the project, six and a half million right now for construction. So what would it be, 650000 for design? My math is right. And 25% of that's done. Um, I, I don't know, Fred, if you have any other guesses or Keith, any other guesses as to what it would be, but it's, it's significant. Yeah, that's... That's good enough for now for a rough estimate. And, and I guess the, the, the other thing I, I think that, that Natalie was going to try to do that we haven't seen much of yet is the uh, involvement with Northampton Waterworks or Department of Public Works, whatever they're called, that manages a reservoir. Uh, some design features of the project affect may affect the water quality and they're, they're not even involved they're not even at the table now to hear or participate or even contribute and i think natalie was going to try to reach out to them and at least get them in a next meeting to to uh hear what's going on and and, and what they have to offer so well they were involved at one point mm -hmm. yes City of Northampton has been involved. They've been at many a meetings, and, okay. and of course, this pre, you know, we're talking so many years that this has been going on that they were very active, and they're more or less just waiting. I guess it's fair to say they don't want to play their cards yet until they know really a little bit more themselves. But we always felt that they would probably be willing to to contribute something, some type of dollar amount, but they're not going to come up front and, uh, and openly just hand out cash until they really know what they've got to do. Okay, well, at least it is, recently they haven't been involved up until maybe now, but. Well, but the, but the point is they were involved, and I'm, I'm, part of me is wondering whether it's a PR play more than anything. I mean, if, yeah. if the city of Northampton gets behind this, and says, wait a second, Mass DOT, what, what are you doing putting our water supply in jeopardy? Right. And then you get, then, then you get Senator Comerford involved, you get Senator Hines involved. Um, it, 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 I don't know, it just strikes me that this is a, this is a PR play. This is, this is a, this is a water issue. And we all know what happens to the water supply of our region if something were to happen to that reservoir. I mean, that's the only reason Northampton cares. Right. Yeah, I, I agree fully with what you're saying, Jonathan. And I think that's why we need to have these people at meetings soon and not wait till year five to talk about it. I, I, I think what you should be hearing, Fred, from, from Keith is that they have been at meetings. Okay, so I, I, I guess we're kind of going around in circles on something well, that we don't have control over. Um, but maybe, um, can we go to the next item then? Yeah.
Um, Poplar Hill Road improvements. I know that's it's something that that Keith is hoping to get started on. Um, mm -hmm. I reached out to Smith because I Smith College to I just wanted to reaffirm their commitment to um, for the to contribute the sixty thousand dollars for the project. I have not heard back yet, um, but I I assume and that's not a good thing to do until I hear differently um, that they're willing to do that. And I have um, a cost contribution agreement from town council that we'd be asking them to sign. So we're not speculating, we're spending money and speculating that they're going to right. uh, reimburse us on that. I don't know, Keith, if you want to add anything, if not, I'll. No, I, I think you're know, just, you know, right now we just got to make sure that yes, they are going to um, sign that agreement that the, the lawyers drafted up and then we can begin to move forward. Yep. Okay. Um, Chestnut Plain Road, um, the sidewalk, the complete streets um, project. I I submitted a request to extend the contract date. Um, the agreement date ended June 30th, 2020. I received an email today with a, a contract amendment to extend that an additional 12 months. Um, we're not anticipating that we'll need the additional 12 months to do it, um, mm -hmm. but we wanted to make sure that if with all that's happening that we had the ability to go beyond June 30th. Um, I know, I think Keith and I would both like to get this done this construction season. Um, because Definitely. hopefully when, um, when all this clears out, we're, we're going to be approaching the 250th anniversary. So it'd be nice to, yeah, to have that settled. Um, I talked about this earlier. I, I had a call with Paul and Taya. Um, they have May 12th, May 26th and June 9th. Um, as budget meetings, um, what I I have a pretty good handle, as I mentioned before, on the budget that submitted. Um, I have some projections that I'm um, will be sharing, hopefully by the end of the week. Um, and I, I think our task will be to to figure out how we want to move forward. Um, so, uh, okay. uh, I think. I think at the end of the day, we'll, the, the town's in good shape um, for a number of reasons. And um, we also need to coordinate, and I had reached out to Joyce about this. There's an effort to coordinate, I think, a meeting with this, either select board chairs or select board and finance chairs to, um, to kind of give some direction to Frontier as to um, what the towns would um, expect or, or hope to see from Frontier for FY21, for their FY21 budget. Um, mm -hmm. But there's, there's, there's conflicting, as you, you saw the letters, there's conflicting requests um, from the different towns, so. Um. Brian, and uh, thinking about the, this budget season here, uh, do you think it would be helpful to, you know, we've got CPC uh, proposing projects uh, not really in a, in a town budget, but the one that does impact the budget is the is the financing of the continued financing of the town hall. Uh, plus, they got other projects in there that are all of them still necessary. Do we want to commit the funds for CPA funds this year without knowing what's going to happen in the future for that source of funding? And the other thing is the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Uh, yeah, we met early in the year. Uh, additional projects have been submitted to them or have been submitted to finance uh, in a budget process here, but not any input from the, that committee. Uh, should that committee be meeting again to look at, at now the total project and, and with the the uh, uncertainty of future funding, what do we really want to improve, want to fund for capital improvements? Or we want to leave all this up to the finance committee? I guess that's the other option. Well, I think the way that the, the capital improvement planning committee looks at projects is it, it, it didn't look at costs. It tried to, it tried to prioritize based on need. Um, so, so I don't, I don't know that that potential funding shortfalls 
should affect their decision um, because presumably there's the need is the need, I would hope. Um, the idea was that the finance finance committee would look at the recommendations and, and, and look at the, the financial part of it. Um, which, which additional projects are you thinking about? You mean for the capital improvement? Yeah. I wasn't there for the radios for the police and fire. Wasn't there some additional for that? And then, and then I don't know, was Keith proposing some equipment for capital improvements, additional equipment? Here, um, the, the chipper or, or the excavator, whatever. Uh, and then. I feel like we talked about the excavator. Something else, something, um, else, something else came up, one other. The amount for the radios changed. Um, and then I don't. And then obviously the wood chipper is a is is a need as well. Yeah. Um, so it may only be the wood chipper that that wasn't reviewed by the committee. So I don't know. I guess it's a question for for the board and for the finance committee if they would find a recommendation useful from the CIPC as to any new projects. And at, at this point, I think it's only the chipper. Um, okay. What are your thoughts on on the CPC then? Do we still um, continue what they're recommending? So, so it wouldn't, so the CPC, unless we're going to, unless there was a town meeting action to reduce the percentage collected, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't give taxpayers any relief. Um, in terms of, in terms of, Future funding, um, I, I don't know. I really haven't given it any thought. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it would affect the, I guess an economic slowdown could affect the the percent match that we get or the total amount we get. Right. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I think I'd have to give it some more thought. I mean, there, there's – Looking at their projects being proposed, there, there's some that I could see we could delay a year without losing anything, and there's others that are more critical than that. And, and I just think continuing to approve them all because money's there today, and I, I, I don't know, I just feel a little leery of, of doing that, I guess. Well, it seems like the, the commitments that they're making for the far future were the town hall payments, right? So it seems that those, we should definitely, I mean, we can probably find out, They and my guess is they've already, uh, they'll have an answer if we say, you know, should the state match you at 0%, All right. would you still be able to make those commitments? And I'm pretty sure at the time, we kind of asked that question and the answer was yes. Yeah, we have to. Right. That we, yeah, that because I think you wouldn't really be able to use that as loan security <laughs> um, in the sense that we did. Um, that So I, I think probably for their long-term commitments, they're probably covered. Uh, but you're worried that there might be some projects that come up that might be more important than something that we might approve in the shorter term. So you want them to re-look at everything. Well, that's, is, is that what I'm hearing? Uh, yes, that's my thought, yes, to... But why? The, why? Why are you singling out the CPC? That's our other source of project. You got three sources of, of projects. Well, the capital improvement planning committee, CPC, and, and the town budget. That's where all our projects come from. Right, but but you could argue that we should reassess our entire budget, then, Fred. Well, we're gonna look at. That. I'm just offering that as. as I didn't hear Brian saying we're going to go and look at that. He's looking at the town budget, yes, and some of that is in a budget. And I guess it comes down to is finance and select board going to decide on them, or do we want to go back and get a recommendation, say, from CPC? But but the CPC money's already I, – I, I guess I don't see it as, as – as, I, I see it as apples and oranges. The CPC money – isn't part of the general operating expenses of the town in, in no way, shape or form. The taxation has already taken place. So it's, if, if that money is, is there from the state, 
the money's already been in, accrued from our own tax base. So how, how does changing the CPC decision-making impact the, the, our, our state of fiscal affairs in terms of fiscal think, responsibility? The only thing for sure is the 3% that we get from our tax base. We have no guarantee that we're getting a match in the future. No, I understand that. But the, the, my point is, is that that's a problem for the future then. Well, because again, it doesn't impact the tax base of the town at all. Yeah, I I I, I agree with that, but it just I, I guess it comes down to what whether we're still comfortable funding all of them projects. But but again, it's it's not the only reason affordability is rarely the reason we fund or, or the town meeting funds or doesn't fund CPC projects. Those are decisions are made based upon the, the value to the town, whether we think the project itself is a good one. It, it, the, the money is there. You know, the, the money's there. So I don't, I, I guess I'm, I'm confused as to why. And, and the CPC, you know, a lot of smart people on that committee that are pretty diligent about finances and 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 debt service and 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 these types of things. So, and there's not a big ticket item except for one other one on there. And again, it's it's paid for. Yeah, well, okay. Continue on. I said my piece, I guess. And whether Brian wants to. Think about it or do something that's up to him, but. Okay, so, so you heard. Yeah. Um, in, terms of the, um, in terms of the water merger status, I um, just wanted to bring this back because it's kind of been silent for a little while. Um, I don't know if we, we talked about that, that they received conservation commission approval for the, the uh, oh. location of the pumping station. Okay. Um, in terms of in terms of next steps, um, I know Wayne's reached out to the engineer. Um, they're going to need to um, file applications with MassDEP to modify the system, and that's contingent on MassDEP's approval. Is contingent on the passage of the zoning amendments that affect the Aquifer Protection Overlay District for the which was going to happen at the annual town meeting we should have had yesterday. Um, I just realized we should have had it yesterday and we should be on vacation now, but um, <laughs> so those are, those are things that we need to keep pushing forward. Um, so I, I think as I'm speaking, I, I, I think I want to have a, a larger discussion about this. Um, Okay. To bring everybody back together in terms of the water district and the water department, um, and then report mm -hmm. back to the board. Yeah, get us back on track. Yeah, have gotten delayed a little bit. Um, manganese filtration project, um, it's done. It's operational. Um, there was a technical hang up in terms of um, equipment um, incompatibility in terms of the monitoring system that they had hoped to put in. So there has been, they have engineered some workarounds. Um, so hopefully they can install that, um, I don't know, with, within weeks or months. Um, it, it just helps them with coordinating all of their systems. But um, it's the filtration system has been operational for since last November, I think. Um, also in your packet, you have, I think, what's the annual letter from Pan Am Railway about all the pesticides and herbicides, uh, herbicides I don't remember, chemicals are going to spray on the right of way. Um, and then there's also a letter um, from Greg, um, Greg's, um, Greg Septic, um, which talked about concerns about their ability to dispose of wastewater in Western Massachusetts. Um, there's not necessarily an ask to the letter, so I'm not sure what to do about it, but. Um, well, our town does not have a, a wastewater treatment facility 
that could help him out. So there's not much we can do with it other than offer our sympathy, really. Uh, right, unless there's some action uh, at, either at the state. Um, I'm not sure where we could help out at this point. But. Well, if, if my, my concern would be that although we don't have, the, the fact that we don't have a wastewater treatment facility makes services like Greg's and I, I'm assuming there are competitors in town, I'm, although I'm not aware of any, um, even more important to everyone who's on a septic system. I mean, what do you do if, if, if it sounds like there's discussion of restricting, and again, I'm guessing based upon, you know, just guess that, that there's a discussion happening somewhere about restricting wastewater disposal from services such as Greg's. And if those restrictions did take place, probably restrictions that are that are driven by people who don't have to worry about private septic disposal, um, what, what would our residents do? And it perhaps is a bigger deal than we imagine. Yeah. Because of options. Yeah. If he's going to drive it out of state, it means it's going to be more expensive for somebody in our town, which is all septic, to have their septic system pumped. And if he's going to transport it out of state. Right. So um, to that extent, um, our neighbors who do have a, a waste treatment plant, though, they just have different problems. And their first priority may be their municipal customers. And they're not necessarily set up to take in things from, from industry um, or from, you know, operators like Greg. But um, I think you're right, Brian. There's really not an ask here, but it's good to be aware of. So thank you. Well, it could be an added expense for all our buildings too, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I could always send an email and ask them if there's anything that yeah. we can do. I'm happy to do that. I, I'll do that. There's an email at the bottom. That'd be great. Um, okay. And we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. I think that's all I have. Yep. And there are no items not anticipated. What, what are we doing with the uh, transfer station? Is that still up in the air? As far as the, the, with the solid waste or whatever, uh, recyclables. I think the transfer station is operating with no, no, not, not, gloves. I, oh, I we had signed that agreement a couple meetings ago. The agreement with the, okay, are we signed? Okay. Yep. And that's going to start? Uh, July 1st, I think. Okay. And has so they, I, have they changed any of the fees? For um, I have July 1st dramatically. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about the pays you throw? Right. Oh. I don't know. That's a question. I, I guess we could ask Fran that when I, I think he's been a little distracted, but yeah. Um, I know that he said they were putting it on their agenda, but I don't know the timeline for that. Right. right. It is something that we need to monitor because we do need to increase those fees. Well, yeah. And when do yeah. they, they start? You need to tell people, I, I guess. Yeah. At a time. Um, yeah. I'll follow up with Fran. Okay. All right, it sounds like we are done with agenda items and we're done with Fred's agenda as well. So um, I take a motion to adjourn. Yep. Second. All in favor? John?